Oh, we're going to give an, a, a welcome just as warm as that to our second breakthrough congregation, Unitarian Church of Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, Reverend Howard Dana. Thank you, Jenny, and good morning. I am Reverend Howard Dana, and I am the senior minister at the Unitarian Church of Harrisburg. And it is an honor and a privilege to stand on this stage and to have been the recipient of a Breakthrough Congregation Award this year. This award could not have come at a better time for our congregation as we do bold things to live out our mission in the world. You will very soon see our video, but I want to very briefly introduce some folks who are here on the stage with me. Reverend Suzanne Marsh is our associate minister. Trish Brandon is our director of religious education. And with me are members of the congregation, Michael and Rachel Mark, Thomas, Tom and Alice Winner, Bart and Kate Carpenter, Margaret Corot, Jim Cavanaugh, and Greg Boyd. Tom Connors is here as well. <laughs> Enjoy our video. Roll the video now. We have gone where few congregations have gone before. This congregation has taken the bold step. We are not only a church of ourselves, but we are a church of a community. And we have a community in need, in great need. And we need to get out of ourselves and assist them. And interestingly enough, by assisting them, we have helped ourselves. This congregation is very bold and has done something very bold by buying a second campus in the city of Harrisburg. And that's very scary to the congregation and to me, but we did it anyway because we know that it's an important thing to do. And I think that uh, just purchasing a building and coming in and becoming part of a community, a community that many of us uh, really turned our back on, didn't really want to know existed and the opportunity to come worship uh, a few times a month has really helped people understand that many of the stereotypes and many of the um, ideas that maybe they had of Allison Hill and the people who live here uh, really was unfounded. And I think that the more that we come to this place and uh, make connections with the individuals here in Allison Hill, the better off we'll be. By the time we got to the end, the church had pretty much split. I had lost some of my dearest friends. Um, it, was, it was just terrible. There was enough commitment by a few people, and we were down to a very, very small attendance, uh, that it, it went on. I don't know that we saw much of a future. There is, there is a little engine in this congregation that keeps on going and keeps on going. And I think it was getting down to the core, getting down to what the core of this church was, what they believe, and how important this church is to so many people in this area. And not being able to imagine central Pennsylvania without a liberal religious community. started to forgive each other in what we had done and then looked forward to bringing a settled minister in. My family chose to stay with the Unitarian Church of Harrisburg after that initial attraction because there were so many different programs and classes and um, social action um, projects that we could become involved in 
and there were people that invited us to be a part of that. When I went to the Pride Fest, uh, I was amazed again at the number of people from our Unitarian Church and many of the Unitarian churches in Central PA that were there to be the shield between the parade participants and the protesters. I wish I was as good as some of the people who do. <laughs> I mean, they're doing that prompts me more to do the race against racism and things that aren't necessarily for myself. Probably 2003, 2004, I could see that we were physically having space issues and that there were limits to the programs we could do in the church because committees and groups would be vying for the same space. We all agreed that we needed more space, we just didn't know exactly how to go about it. Whether it be building a church or figuring out how to raise funds to renovate our current building or uh, moving into Harrisburg. I saw the pitfalls of taking on a building this large and the age that this building is, but they didn't really frighten me. What frightened me was that um, the congregation in itself would um, experience a tension around the decision about whether to, to move forward with this. The personal and emotional and spiritual bonds that held the church together wouldn't, wouldn't hold. Um, I'm relieved now, a year and a half later, to, to see that um, I won't say I needn't have worried, but everything has turned out fine. Well, the congregational meeting in 2008 was uh, really an experience to behold. It was uh, well, leading up to the meeting, none of us really knew what to expect. We didn't know if people would storm out in anger or if we would all just hold hands and sing songs and, and, and agree on those things. It was one of the more uh, interesting church meetings that I've ever been a part of. It had been a week of, of controversy. Uh, emails back and forth, flame wars even. Um, people very concerned. Um, on the one hand, that we wouldn't take this once-in-a-lifetime opportunity that was so in line with what we said we wanted to do. And on the other hand, people extremely concerned about taking on a huge new expense and debt related to that expense right in the middle of a recession when many people were concerned about the neighborhood itself. Um, uh, there was concern about whether there was a, an undercurrent or a, a conspiracy maybe to move the entire congregation to this building and get rid of this old building that was so beloved to many in the congregation. And that all came to a head during the last few days of that week. And in the end, it came down to a vote. Either we're going to do this risky thing or not do it. This was a decision where you had to vote yes or no. I think that anytime you're on an adventure together, anytime you are growing, anytime you really are engaged in a good measure of discovery and of taking risk, I think that's a really messy proposition. Um, and so it hasn't been neat and we haven't tied everything up in a bow. And there are times when we have um, argued mightily among us and where there have been hurt feelings and, and, and um, maybe not, so, not such great feelings. And I just think that's part of our struggle together, and that's part of the risk that we take in being together. We are striving to live out our principles. Uh, we come to church every Sunday, we sing, uh, we hug, we listen to Howard's incredible sermons, um, and that's all good. Uh, but what really is going to be important as we move forward is to show people that we don't just talk the talk, but we also walk the walk. Uh, we find opportunities, we look for opportunities, uh, and we don't just watch them from afar, but we get involved. There are no limits. There are no limits at this point.
ever get this work done? There, there will never be a destination. And somehow we have to get settled with that. We just have to be okay with that. The congregation has stepped over this little white line and is starting to see what it's like on the other side. And I can't imagine that they're going to want to stop. We will never ever get this work completely done.